Hello, my name is Andy Stewart. I'm a solution engineer on the ArcGIS Indoors team, and today we'll be overviewing how to create and curate your building points of interest. If you have time, check out our Indoors webpage in the description below. In the meantime, let's get started. First, begin curating the units feature class for potential points of interest. Use the Select by Attributes geoprocessing tool to select a set of unit use types to become points of interest. Use the includes the value selection method to select units with a use type among stairway, elevator, restroom, kitchen, conference room, office, office cubicle, and any others that are pertinent. Generally, building infrastructure units are omitted. For example, janitor closet and electrical room. Next, using the feature to point geoprocessing tool, convert the selected units to points in a temporary feature class. The input features is unit. The output feature class is going to be named units underscore POI underscore TMP. The option for inside is checked. And then we will run the geoprocessing tool. Next, go to your geoprocessing search bar and search for the feature to 3D by attribute. Once selected, go to your input features and select unit POI TMP. And for your output feature class, it will be called units POI TMP feature 3D. For height field, select relative elevation. And for two height field, select relative elevation, then hit run. Once that step is complete, append the temporary point of interest feature class to the ArcGIS Indoors Information Model Database's point of interest feature class. The newly created temporary feature class is the input. The ArcGIS Indoors Information Model Database point of interest feature class is the target and the schema type option is use the field map to reconcile schema differences. This should be used to populate some fields in the point of interest feature class that do not come across directly from the units feature class schema. The output fields is unit name, and the name is selected for units POI TMP feature 3D. Once selected, just press run. Next, we will populate other fields in the new points of interest feature class with some manipulation of the attribute table. Locate your attribute table for points of interest and find category subtype. Then use a field calculation to calculate category subtype and match the use type field. Then for category type, do another field calculation and call it places and things. For point of interest ID, go ahead and do another field calculation and match it with the object ID. The last field that we have to calculate is display scale ID. Go to display scale ID in your attribute table and do a calculate field. In the field calculation, type in unit. Once typed, go ahead and press run. Next, I'm going to open my categories table to look at the various points of interest I can add to my map that may have not been created from the feature to point geoprocessing tool, which is only deriving unit points of interest and not safety and security and retail and service points of interest. Once I have the table open for categories, I'm going to be searching for fire extinguisher and I'm going to be searching for concession. These are the two points of interest I will be adding to my map. Once identified, I'm going to go to the edit tab, push create, and go to points of interest. I'm going to now add these points of interest to my map. Make sure the points of interest that are created have a Z value to ensure that they have 3D elevation. 
Once the points of interest have been created, go back and give them the proper attribute information, including category type, category subtype, relative height and elevation, absolute height and elevation, vertical order, a facility ID, and facility name. To do this, I was referring to the other points of interest attributes and copy and pasting them, and then editing them. And I was doing also field calculations to certain fields to make the process a lot quicker. Over the course of the next minute, I'm going to speed up the video on editing the attribute table. Just make sure that the previous fields mentioned, such as category type and category subtype, are being given the proper values. Also, ensure the Z value is added. To do that, just make sure you fill in the proper value information for relative height, relative elevation, absolute height, and absolute elevation. And also make sure it has a vertical order. Next, I'm going to copy and paste the points of interest layer into contents pane twice. I'm going to rename each point of interest class based on their category type field. For example, the first point of interest layer, I'm going to rename it places plus things. And then the following are going to be called safety plus security and retail plus services. Make sure that the plus symbol is in between places plus things safety plus security and retail plus services because the information model is only able to distinguish those category fields based on the proper lettering and symbols. Once this step is complete, I'm going to do a definition query on places plus things. For the definition query, we're going to have it set as where category type includes the values of what that layer is named after. And then we're going to commit the change. Make sure that your symbols are actually pertaining to what your layer field name is after. So for places and things, I'm going to give it a black dot. Safety and security, I'm going to give it a rectangle or a triangle. And then retail and services, I'm going to change up the symbology a little bit more too. That way we can distinguish what we are filtering for. The next task is to edit the categories table. We're going to adjust the feature count based on the amount of POIs. Once we have the categories table open, we're going to locate safety and security. We're going to give it a feature count of one. That's because we have one fire extinguisher. For retail and services, we'll give it a feature count of one because we have one concession. Now go to the name field and give an ascending order. Locate fire extinguisher and give it a feature count of one. Repeat this process for concession. Once that's complete, we'll have to do a summary statistic on places and things. That's because it has a lot more information within its category subtype field. Once we have the tool open, We'll put the input table as places and things. For the statistic field, we'll do category subtype. For the statistic type, we're going to do count. And for the case field, we'll have it set as category subtype, and then we'll press run. Once you run the tool, go into your geo database and locate the places table. Add it to the map, and now you can adjust the feature count for places and things and individually named category subtypes. This process may take a bit, therefore I'm going to speed it up. What I'm doing here is I'm just copying and pasting all that information from the places table and bringing it over into the categories table. Once this step is complete, don't forget to save.
Now we need to ensure that the layer ID for each layer is unique. Go to the map properties, go to the general tab and check off allow assignment of unique numeric IDs for sharing web layers. You will now have a unique ID for each layer. The final step is to ensure our point of interest symbology is being used to distinguish our category subtypes. First, add the point of interest styles package that is in your product files. Once added, go to the places and things symbology and give unique values to the category subtype. Repeat this process for safety and security in retail and services. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, suggestion, or question in the comments below. Please go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel to learn more about RTS indoors.